the philosophy is very simple. It was sports, like everything else in the world, is about the human beings involved. And by now we've heard that so many times, it's cliche, but uh, it wasn't at that time. And the idea was to focus on the individual. First of all, because that's what people are interested in. But secondly, because we're also going to do some of these fairly obscure sports. And the idea was if we can get them interested in the people, we can get them interested in the sport. Much more difficult the other way around. Also, Rune was, was very clever on our early shows. He, know that people, he knew that people did not watch in those days things like figure skating and gymnastics, believe it or not. You couldn't get 100 people to watch the National Championship of Gymnastics in those days. But he said, well, I'll put an auto crash show on there, and I, people will always watch an accident, uh, and, may, and then they'll watch these other shows, he said, because I think they're going to like them once they see them. And uh, I don't think people would question very much the wide world has contributed more to the growth of uh, particularly figure skating and gymnastics and other women's sports, by the way, uh, as well as other men's sports. We did women's sports on a large scale right from the beginning, and it didn't have anything to do with we will showcase women's sports. It just so happened that women's gymnastics, women's figure skating was more appealing to people. Women's swimming was very good, women's, women's diving. We did so many. Women's track and field with the great Wilma Rudolph back in the early uh, 60s. Uh, it was a very appealing show to me, and I, I enjoyed all the, all the stuff we did. I did not enjoy the travel all that much, and I still don't. And yet, uh, you almost didn't get a chance to do a lot of that travel, because uh, after uh, the, the first run in 61, the show looks like it's going to get put on the shelf. Did you think, uh, here we go again? It almost, uh, Wide World almost went off the air in the middle of the first summer. As we said, it was, it was uh, a summer replacement show, 20 weeks, but about the 10th week, I guess, they were seriously thinking about taking us off the air, and then we went to Moscow to televise the U.S.-Soviet track and field meet. Uh, I must give the credit to Rune. He had a lot of guts uh, to even dare to do this. It was very difficult to get any sort of clearance from the Soviets. Finally, he had to send somebody down to Washington, to the Soviet embassy, to sit in the embassy to wait for an answer. They wouldn't give us an answer. Even after the guy was down, down there, we, there still was no answer, so Roon took a gamble and sent all the equipment, we had to take our own equipment, and the technicians as far as Amsterdam, because if he didn't send them that far, we couldn't get there in time for the track meet, which was that weekend. And finally the clearance came and flew into Moscow. The guys got off at the airport, there was no Hertz over there in those days, no Avis, uh, nothing like that, and they thought, how are we going to get this stuff to the state? And finally somebody from the government came and sent some army trucks. and. Um, and, and took the stuff in there. <clears throat> we had videotape, of course, that's what we were going to record it on. They did not. There was no such thing in the Soviet Union at that time. So uh, our control room was done in an informal way in the in Lenin Stadium. It was set up on one of the ramps leading up into the stands. And at a given point, uh, somebody looked down and they saw this 100 meter dash, which had taken place five minutes ago. How could that be? You know, it, it isn't there anymore. And of course, it was videotape. And uh, the, uh, eventually, uh, several hundred people came down and forgot the, the live thing that was out there, like they do at the racetracks now, and uh, were down watching this at miracle called videotape. And in fact, two of our technicians were told to sleep with the tape heads, the recording part of it, under their pillows, you know, so the Soviets wouldn't find out. <laughs>